Hey everybody, here's a little ditty about how we escaped to the country from the city. Under nicotine skies, the wildfire pal, we did it on the cheap and we had a ball. Far from the drone of the SUV, moldy housing, addiction and the poverty, we made like turtles and we headed for the cove, with tents and tarps and a change of clothes. Joe packed us down with dehydrated nosh. It tasted okay if we're not being too posh. The kids were happy with maple roasted nuts and chocks. Chips and Smarties put a spring in their crocs. But let's back up to the adventure's start. Catching a 6am bus was the hardest part. We missed it, had to walk to commercial Broadway, barely awake and grumpy, needless to say. From unravelling, the travelling began to look up. We flew through the air to our next bus stop. Skytrain placed us down, gently, for the express bus to get us to our planned ferry. The excitement was now beginning to build on the sunshine coast that was sunshine filled as the ship slipped off into a silvery sea around us furry mountains of coastal BC. Down in the cafe Joe gathered the team and they inhaled waffles, maple syrup and cream followed by a wander on the upper sun deck till the tannoy announced Langdale ahead. Now was a fun part of the journey a little BC ferries water taxi through the shoal channel part of the Salish Sea, we motored salt water flying past our destiny. Past Gibson's, past Plumper, to Keats Landing we came, a hike through the forest, still remained to the cove and the campsite where we were staying. We gathered our sacks and surveyed the port, a hillside of apple trees and huts of a sort. The grass was yellow and the path gravelly to the worn forest track to our camp by the sea. Handwritten signs warned about Google. Follow the forest path, they said, like a good poodle. Laden, we tugged our luggage across the land. Twisted roots and rocks made it hard to stand. Great cedars and firs rose on a carpet of ferns, a Jurassic scene, but what was of concern was that swathes of the forest were tinder dry, still standing, but much of it ready to die. Where streams had run was only dust, a rainforest but without rain in its recent past. But enough of the gloom and climate reality, nature was still nourishing our family. Under the canopy, the kids excitedly trudged, calling and joshing and forgetting the drudge of their tiredness and weight of sacks on small shoulders as they fumbled and stumbled over logs and boulders. After one hour plus walking, we eventually arrived, the forest opening to the harbour side. Boats were afloat by the pier in small rows, and moored a short distance out a pink flamingo. A bright, rubber, pink, circular thing, Rohan insisted we swim to, climb aboard and lie in. But first we spied out a pitch for our camp for the week, a quiet, secluded spot just up from a beach. I downed my pack, hung the hammock from the tree, slipped into the net and let my mind go free. Through a thicket of brush I spied waves roll in on the tide. Kids were darting in and out on all sides. Finley was straddled across what he called a raft, which he then lashed and pulled along in his path. He'd found it on the rocks, a lump of styrofoam, stuck to a rough metal sheet that was rusty and brown. As the day wore on, a routine took shape, cooking, then swimming, then games, then repeat. We followed the rise and fall of tide and sun. The stars speckled the skies when the day was done. Deprived of devices, imagination ruled, at least would have given more time to unmoor. Virals and video games were still top of mind, but nature and critters helped the mind to unwind. There was fort building cards, wrestling too, hammock lying, ocean watching and eating lots of food. And every day there was swimming by the pier in the sea, fresh and clear and chilly, at least initially. 
Shoals of tiny fish speckled in the brine as the kids ran amok and had a good time. They yelled at each other as they climbed up on the rail, wobbling up high and trying not to fail. Hey, it's plumper, it's plumper, forget your fear. You gotta be a jumper from the top rung of the pier. Finley was first to leap into the deep, but the lankier kids found it kind of steep. Ishin played safe, coaxing from the side, and soon the bigs were leaping into the tide. Not that bad, you should jump in. So the days passed with simple activities, and when Alex got bored, I found a mystery. A place not far, a walk through the woods, a Christian retreat serving chilled homemade goods. In an old logger's cabin, now the general store, the Barnabas Landing crew served milkshakes, ice cream cones and more. The days were long, the weather was warm. It was peaceful and quiet, but soon it was time to go home. It's not too hard to summer in a tent, only 16 bucks a night, a fraction of Vancouver rent. So camping is fun, but I think we all agree we look forward to a shower and a flushing lavatory. So up we rose for a smoky morning hike back to the city by boat, ferry and bus ride. Two and a half hours later we were back in our place and all that remains is this story in this space.